Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here. I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. We're going to look at the NIV 2011 update. You know, it's 2019, about to be 2020. It may be 2020 when you're watching this video, as a matter of fact. And so the NIV changed in 2011. So why did the NIV change? And so I, I was on an article by BibleResearcher.com. Let's see, this is by Michael Marlowe, and extremely informative. And it basically says the real reason was gender neutrality. And it gives some, uh, some examples here. So we're in Psalm 1. I'll just read you an example. So uh, 1984 NIV says, Blessed is the man who, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners. Okay, the 2011 NIV says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of sinners. The one. So um, the gender neutrality issue has caused some controversy. They tried to update the NIV before this, and it didn't go well because they brought in gender inclusive language. And then you had this whole litany of your Charles Swindolls and your Stanleys and basically your who's who of evangelical Christianity that said, we're not going to use it. And so they came back with it in another way and said, I'm just looking up some other things here and said, well, let's see if we can get it passed this way. So the real reason of the revision, the explanation offered for the updates is also misleading. It does not mention the real political and financial considerations that have caused the NIV committee to make three revisions within the past 15 years. The considerations that set in motion this series of revisions are, however, indicated in a document that set forth a new policy on gender inclusive language adopted by the committee in 1992. Authors of biblical books, this comes from the uh, NIV committee, while even while writing scripture inspired by the Holy Spirit, unconsciously reflected in many ways the particular cultures in which they wrote. See, I don't believe that at all. I believe in more like mechanical dictation. It came from the mind of God. Hence, in the manner in which they articulate the word of God, they sometimes offend modern sensibilities. At such times, translators can and may use non-offending renderings so as not to hinder the message of the Spirit. So, I mean... You know, let's retranslate the Bible not to offend anybody. That's not good. The patriarchalism, like other social patterns of the ancient cultures in which the biblical books were, books were composed, is pervasively reflected in forms of expression that appear in modern context to deny the common human dignity of all hearers and readers. For these forms, alternative modes of expression can and may be used, though care must be taken not to distort the intent of the original uh, text. Um, it was claimed that their purpose was nothing other than to make the meaning of the text clear. This, however, was widely dismissed as an evasion because the editing process, which eliminated the words man, father, son, brother, his, etc., had obviously nothing to do with any considerations about the meaning of the original words or with any desire to make the meaning clear. It's not even credible that such arbitrary and mechanical changes would have been done by a committee of scholars, and we may assume it was done by style editors employed by the publisher. And that's talking about the TNIV. And so, um, there are many translations currently undergoing revisions. The ESV just came out with a revision last year and then they said this is our last revision and then they said okay maybe not. The NASB I think next year is coming out with a revision. They came out with another one in 1996. Seven, six or seven before that according to Lawrence Vance. He's examined it considered by Metzger an expert in that. Um, the NRSV is coming out with a revision. Uh, the uh, New Living Translation in 2015 came out with a revision. And just know, most of these re revisions, and I'm going to say most, not all, because I don't want to paint with a broad brush, are not done with a desire to how can we translate the original languages better? 
How can we be more thankful to God's message to us in English speaking countries or Spanish speaking countries or, you know, Chinese speaking countries? It's done with the desire. The culture has changed. We must change with it. And so uh, this is the 2011 NIV. I had pulled up yesterday when I was studying for this. Let me just see something here. Another little thing that I am not finding right now. Let's see if I can find it here. Da -da -da -da. Let's see. Okay, let me just read you this off Wikipedia, off about the 2011. Professor of New Testament Studies, Daniel B. Wallace, praised the 2011 update, calling it a well-thought-out translation with checks and balances through rigorous testing, overlapping committees to ensure consistency and accuracy, and a publisher willing to commit significant resources to make this Bible appealing to the Christian reader. The Southern Baptist Convention, however, rejected the 2011 update because of gender-neutral language although it had dropped some gender-neutral language of the 2005 revision. Southern Baptist publisher LifeWay declined the SBC censor request to remove the NIV from their source. I find that fascinating that SBC has a censor, just like the Catholic Church. Okay, so while the Lutheran Church Missouri, excuse me, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod rejected it to use some in the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod believe many of the translation changes are right and defensible. Um, so this is the 2011. It's uh, Let me just read you this as well. This is Brutz Metzger criticizing the NIV 1984. And uh, he goes into Jeremiah 7.22, Matthew 13.32, uh, and other verses that kind of criticize that. So the NIV 2011 is kind of fascinating in that, okay, 1984 NIV goes gangbusters. They try to revise the language with the TNIV and it is rejected wholeheartedly. They come back in 2011 with some of the same issues, but maybe ameliorated just a little bit, tapped down, toned down just a little bit, and people are just kind of like, ah. Uh. But evidently, unless they've changed this, and I did think I see, I saw on a CBD recently the 1984 NIV Classic, but they had made the decision, at least at one time, that you can't even get the 1984 edition. So I thought the 1984 edition was very liberal. I read the 1984 edition extensively and even giving it a fair shot, you know, just saying I'm reading it as my daily Bible reading and stuff. And both instances, you know, when I had gone through, I was reading it from Genesis to Revelation type thing. When I got to a certain point, I just threw it down. I was like, ah, that's a terrible translation, like a nearly blasphemous uh, translation like Ephesians 4 6 that God is above all through all and in all it's in you all because he's talking to the church but he says in all you know I'm not sure how the 2011 would read in that I guess I could look it up but we won't we'll let you look it up so this is the current NIV the 2011 and uh, you know whether it made good changes or not uh, that's to be determined like Dan Wallace I'm not a big fan of Dan Wallace I think he's done a lot of good in accumulating all the New Testament manuscripts together that is a fantastic thing but he's definitely not the end all of biblical textual studies neither is James White and so here we are NIV 2011 I'm just going to stick with the KJV 1611 which is really the 1769 which I've discussed in many videos over the years talk with you later God bless you Amen